Hello, thanks for joining us once again. In this video, we are going to cover the class of rogues. Yes, you may know them in some game systems as thieves or cut purses or whatever, and some of you annoyingly also refer to them as rouges by misspelling on your keyboards. No, they are rogues, and it's one of the three basic starting classes in the Dragon Age roleplay game for the tabletop. However, of course, I will point out that there are other specialisations out there that have real breadth of difference between them as you go on. And those are accessible, just like in the computer game, um, in the tabletop from levels 6 onwards. Again, that's out of the scope of this particular video. We'll cover those specialisations at a different later time. So, so what is the rogue then? Well... I think most of you will be familiar with it, so we'll just cover it in a very basic, crude sense. They specialise in doing damage, but they are also specialists in doing things like picking pockets and opening locked doors and opening chests and things. Traps and poison preparation and usage of. You can also do that in the computer game, so they've, they've stuck to their guns very well, uh, being able to give you the computer game experience in that sense. We've got a trap, you need arming. Use a rogue. Maybe th maybe there's going to be traps in the levels. Just if you want to be exactly like the computer game, then the rogue can come along and disarm them. And some of the talents have do have uh, restrictions on which class can take them. But even if a lot of these talents and things didn't, it would still be beneficial for the rogue to do it because their primary stats do really lend themselves towards things like this the attributes. I do want to point out that the poison making and the bomb making elements uh, will appear in the next uh, tiered box, so that's level 6 to 10, tier 2. Right, so another one to cover here, the primary attributes or abilities as this game calls them are communication, dexterity and perception. Communication is the, the way you're able to talk to people and interact with them or you know, maybe you've got contacts or something like that that can open doors for you. Persuasive skills. Dexterity, we already know that that's uh, a series of agility and certain light weapons and ranged weapons and things. And of course, perception is your likelihood of spotting something, sensing something, hearing something, or just honing a shot to uh, find a weak spot. Their starting health, and hence their health overall, I would say is relatively medium. Less than a warrior, but of course more than a mage. They, just like all the classes, come loaded with uh, weapon groups straight out of the box. So the rogue, which will give you some idea towards the intended uh, weapons play style, they get bows, brawling, light blades and staves. Please note that all of these are dexterity based weapons, not strength based ones. And now what I mean by that is, in the case of melee weapons, yes they do still use strength to calculate damage, but to actually decide whether they've hit or not. So it uses the dexterity stat to decide on the hit. So if you're, say, for example, using a light blade, okay, so it's dexterity to see if you hit, and then the strength with the damage. So again, that dexterity base is really showing itself in the, in the weapon groups that you are encouraged to use as a rogue. You're not going to want to be playing towards the attributes uh, that will allow you to use a lot of like the heavier weapons and things like that as much because the, you might not have the prerequisites. The chances of having like a strength 3 to access certain things that are quite heavy to, to lift when you really would have been trying to concentrate your one swap that you get on maybe getting that de dexterity quite high. And do remember that all the bow group weapons, so the short bow, the bow and the crossbow, express their damage, unlike the melee weapons, which use uh, a D roll and uh, strength, they, they, they express it with a D roll, a dice roll, and perception. So, so this really is, it's honing that shot to find that chink in the armor or to really, you know, hit the eye or send it straight into the mouth. <laughs> right, as a rogue, you can choose to go melee or ranged, or both, really in your focuses and talents, however you want to spread it about. You really can go down whatever way you want. And of course, as we as we suggested earlier, the specialisations will allow you to really get to grips with what you're going to be as well. 
But they do start with um, a, a few things that give them a certain lean in one direction anyway. They start with this ability called backstab. Now you can find the rogue starting information on page 28 of the player's guide book in the tier 1 box set. Basically means if you approach your enemy in an unexpected direction with a move action, so you can't have started adjacent to them, and then you win an opposed test of your dexterity stealth versus their perception seeing, you can use your major action then this turn, because a move is a minor, to do a backstab. So it's a plus two bonus to, to, to hit, and it inflicts an extra d6 of damage. Now, do also bear in mind that the thing I said about being able to start adjacent, at level four then they unlock a new ability uh, called bluff. So then they can attempt to do it from starting adjacent, so they could keep doing backstab, backstab, because that way they're you know ducking in under you and backstab again, and ducking back in under you and backstab again. That one, just out of interest, is your uh, communication deception versus your opponent's willpower self-discipline. Now this is a very cool thing, and uh, it's kind of similar to the warrior's armor training, but takes it even further. There's something called Rogue's Armour that they get. It allows them to use all leather armour, so that's light and heavy leather. All rogues automatically start with a light one, and you could use your beginning silver if you wanted to visit the shop and uh, replace it with heavy, thus giving you a point extra armour to start with. Light leather, there's no penalty. But normally at heavy leather, there's a minus one penalty to both your... Uh, well, to your dexterity. And now the dexterity affects your speed as well so you'd be minus one speed and minus one dexterity where the warriors can be at home in certain sort of like armors up to male and then onwards after that future tiers where they only lose the penalty to speed not to their dexterity uh, for the rogue they completely feel at home in leather and suffer no penalty whatsoever in the heavy leather not to the speed or the dexterity so they get to maintain that's crucial speed and if you can see here trying to close the gap if you're a melee rogue so you don't get hit too much with missile weapons because it's not like you can put up a shield wall is it uh, and so you can start backstabbing and putting an enemy between you and the person shooting at them so they have a minus to try and hit you in a continued uh, um, array of uh, ranged shots or if you're a ranged guy and someone's trying to engage you in melee then it gives you that option of being able to move further away from them to keep your distance so you can apply more uh, range shots, so obviously speed's very important for a rogue, be you a ranged one or a melee one. You also get uh, starting talents, so you can become a novice uh, in one of the following three, and I only tell you this because, it, again, it gives you a good idea of the, the developer's intention of the class. So you can either have it in contacts, so you're more likely to know someone who can help out and give you some information or unlock a door for you in, in some way. Scouting, or thievery. Now obviously it is leaning you into uh, one direction a bit there because it's a backstab so it's a melee attack so if you really did want to be a, a uh, ranged focused rogue then obviously that ability doesn't lend itself to your play style so it kind of feels like you are being pigeonholed a bit initially through the game. There's a lot of other things you can do to open up uh, talents and archery style and this sort of thing but I will say that that actually stays very true to the computer game and that's what actually one of the things that I found very frustrating about rogues at least um, in the initial levels before you can start adding the specialization stuff in is that, that they did feel like you were being forced into sort of a backstab type of play so I'm a little bit excited because they have stayed so true to the actual computer game and really that is the experience you want I suppose isn't it I'm sure I'm actually with, with that in mind I'm gonna have to try and Implement loading screens somehow at the table, aren't I? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe a timeout when I need to check a map or something. Now, melee rogues in particular have to weigh up something awkward about trying to exist up on the front lines, which they have to because they need to engage the enemy in melee. Now, up there next to the warriors without quite the survivability that the warriors have. They don't have the armour or the health that the warriors have. The pure damage mitigation or the sheer defence that they would have. Of course, their defence manifests itself through dexterity too, and it would come out as being more 
dodgy, really, in every way. Rogues really, with that sense of mind, really rely on a toolbox of clever tricks to stay alive there, don't they? And nipping around the uh, opposition and really making the most of the movement and major and minor actions and trying to use them in combination. And also, especially if your GM is uh, bringing in very precise uh, like battle map usage and miniatures and you are here and this is here and this is here and this is there you know t tactical positioning because this can all create modifiers and really g help your chances of survival Maybe rather than just like rushing in and engaging the uh, guys that are um, uh, firing upon you maybe you could run around uh, something that gives you cover to try and get close to them and then engage them from from a certain point there now I can see why a lot of uh, elves become rogues really and they're shown as that because well they're naturally very lithe and, and that sort of thing yeah. anyway but their their better speed really gives them an edge into this class and it's it's undeniable really I mean we spoke a little bit about the factors of speed before didn't we now normally I do quite dislike these sort of racial stereotypes and well even in this case I do but you cannot avoid the fact that the way the game has been configured there are no particular minuses to rolling a class only particular differences in, in benefits. So you don't necessarily become a bit more squishy just because you've rolled a rogue over, say, um, a dwarf or a human. It's just that the kind of benefits you'll gain from racially your origin will be different, somewhat leaned towards. So it's not really as big a biggie as minuses would be, is it? So all you're really then left with is that the other major difference, other than the few small bonuses you get in the starting bonus, you might get an extra uh, increase to a certain attribute or something, is the literally how fast you can run. And it, again, it all bases off of your dexterity plus armor penalty plus whatever your race is. So again, if you're a dwarf, it's eight plus that formula. If you're a human, it's 10 plus that formula. And if you're an elf, it's 12 plus that formula. So you'll always have the edge in speed. Now that's not to say that only elves should be rogues, but I'm just pointing out that I can see a mechanics undeniable lean towards them. And I don't like that sort of thing, but I, I can see it. You might be one of those sort of people to say, well, screw that, you know, RP's important. This is a human who's had this lifestyle and, and he's a rogue, he's my rogue and this is what he's going to do. In the computer game, I always did actually tend towards more rangy rogues and that was really to, to the safety of the fact that, oh, well, there's traps and they're going to run headlong in. It's just people you can stand back and just damage them down from a range. That may well end up being the case here as well. Um, also the fact that they are a little bit more survival because they're not being hit. They can't damage mitigate like a tank type can like your Templar or Shale could in the computer game so um, we'll have to see but it's up to you really the way you want to run it thank you for tuning in to this guide on rogues keep an eye out for all of the other videos please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that thumbs up button it really helps the show helps the channel as well to uh, get out there and be seen by more people but until next time I'll see you at the table